Hey, what's up guys? My name is Michael Westbrook and you just heard a short demo of the Jam Pedals Delay Llama Extreme. Before we get into it, I also want to let you know that I am going to be releasing a video in the next few days of kind of a behind the scenes look at how I made that demo and some thoughts on how I make my little demos for each video. I get a lot of questions about you know certain specifics on those, but I just want to give you guys some insights on how I created that. I did some interesting things in this one in particular that I think you guys might enjoy watching. So um, if you're not already, please subscribe so you don't miss that or any future content. I recently picked up the Delay Llama because I hadn't had an analog delay in quite some time. I've generally been using, you know, digital emulations of analog pedals like the H9 from Eventide or the Line 6 HX Stomp. Before that, I had the uh, Strymon Timeline. You know, all of those do great analog delay sounds and come with obvious features of presets and tweakability that you don't always get when you use an analog delay pedal. Now, that being said, I have used my fair share of delay pedals through the years, having had numerous memory mans. Um, I also had the Moog delay at one point. I had the Tap Tempo memory man. I also was an early adopter of the memory lane from Diamond. It was the world's first Tap Tempo all analog delay pedal. Um, I used that thing forever. But over time, I just moved towards the digital realm. Analog delays have their quirks. They have things that maybe aren't always the easiest things to deal with live or on a gig, especially if they don't have tap tempo. One thing that really interested me about the Jam Pedals Delay Llama Extreme was that it not only provides classic sounds, but it gives you presets and some just crazy kinds of sounds that we've never seen before in an analog delay pedal. Digital modeling has gotten so good at replicating analog style pedals that it seems like we're seeing fewer and fewer true analog delay pedals. So that kind of got me thinking, do analog delay pedals still have a place? Is there still something to them that we can't get from the digital world? I think there are two big things to think about when we're talking about analog versus digital delay pedals. One being just the it factor. Sometimes certain pieces of gear or certain types of gear just have something special about them. It's something you can't quite put your finger on. And if you compared it side by side to another thing, there might not be a drastic difference, but there's just something special about one of them over the other one. I think the analog delays typically have this. There's imperfection, there's maybe a little bit of extra noise. They're not perfect, but there's just something about them.
when we're talking about that special intangible quality that a great piece of gear has, some people might only think of vintage gear. And I don't think that has to be the case. There are tons of great builders and manufacturers that are doing incredible job riding that fine line between vintage, maybe imperfect technology and modern technology. I think the Dalai Lama really hits this on the head. One other thing to think about when we're talking about analog delay versus digital delay is that typically analog delays are going to have more limitations. They're going to have less features. Maybe the delay time isn't going to be long. Whatever the case, most analog delays aren't going to be able to do everything that a digital delay does. I've talked about this a few times here on my channel, but I love limitations when I'm creating. Sometimes having too many options or you know, just having numerous presets that I've flipped through, it just doesn't allow me to be as creative for some reason. I don't know why that is. It's kind of counterintuitive in that regard, but I found when I first got the Delay Llama and I was messing with it that I was forced to kind of pay attention to it more. And it was more of a creative process where I was figuring out you know what this pedal does and and what I'm playing and it was more interactive and for me whenever I'm doing that with a pedal I just I find that I come up with better parts I find that I enjoy the process more now ultimately that's just my workflow and how I like to do things and that's not going to be for everybody sometimes you just want a piece of gear that you can turn on and go and you don't even have to think about um, but again, I think there's a place for all of that. It just depends on what you're doing and the time and place that you're doing it in. In some ways, the Delay Llama is a perfect pedal for me. I love that it gives me classic sounds, but it also offers me some more unique sounds that I can't get anywhere else. I find that if I have a pedal that just does something super weird and quirky, that it's probably going to sit on the shelf for a while. And then at some point, I'm going to start looking at it, thinking about how much I could sell it for. Whereas a piece of gear that gives me a lot of options and does a lot is probably going to stick around a little longer. I think this has been one reason why I've sold all of my analog delays in the past is just because they were limiting. While I do love limitations, especially when I'm playing live, having a delay that doesn't have tap tempo can be a problem for me. It's just something I'm not going to be able to use as much. So the Delay Llama really hits that great middle ground for me and that it gives me lots of great features and ease of use, um, but sounds great and is really inspiring to play. Ultimately, it's all about making music. So whatever inspires you, whatever helps you create music more easily is going to be a win. That's going to do it for this video. As always, thanks for watching. Also, be on the lookout for a behind the scenes making of the demo track that I did at the beginning of this video. I'm going to talk a little more in depth about my process and how I create tracks. All right, until next time, I'll see you out there.